what he's done for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's just see what the Lord has for us in his word. I love his holy word. and uh, He's showing me some good stuff always in that word. Amen. challenge everyone here today everyone invite somebody to church this week everyone we all do our part amen give him the praise thank you Lord look right here revival spreads we're going to talk about revival amen I'm seeing things go on that confirm the word in an awesome way, and we're going to see it here this morning uh, of what's going on. Amen. Praise God. You know, I, I, I give God the praise. I pray that there's an awesome revival in the world before he raptures out of here, but I'd really like him going raptures out of here tomorrow. It'd be good. That'd be fine. Or this evening, it'd be good too. Or even now, I, I'm ready. Amen. Be looking for the Lord because he is coming back. And we're seeing more and more signs that things is happening. How many got stuck this past week when your flight globally wouldn't go where it's supposed to go to? Ronnie did. He had to take a leased car and drive home because his flight wouldn't get him back to Greenville, South Carolina. Amen. But he, he burnt them tires up and brought her home. Amen. How many had to go to the bank and the bank wouldn't give you what was yours? Uh-huh. Because the electronics was messing up. Okay, sign of the times, I'm telling you, it's going on. A lot of stuff. How many went to the gas station and you couldn't pump gas because the electronics and the Visa cards and all of the, the stuff uh, wouldn't work? All that happened this week, you know. Think about it. But I want to tell you this. Our God's still in control. I don't care if they shut everything down. God's in control. Amen. And praise God, we can comfort each other with that. Let's look and see what God says. You know, you know, Paul was a brother. I can't wait to talk to old Paul. You know, Paul was just loaded with wisdom and knowledge. And Paul was uh, raised up, uh, you know, a Jew. And he was dedicated to what he was raised up to. But after he seen Jesus on the Damascus Road, his world changed, didn't it? Amen. And he wrote, what, 14 of the epistles and, and some of all of that. And so uh, Paul it was an awesome uh, man of God, and he paid a price for it, just like you and I uh, have to go through tribulations and things because we're Christians. Uh, the disciples did too, and the ones that followed Jesus did too. But praise God, we're going to have the victory one day. Well, we already got the victory, not one day, praise God. But one day we're going to be totally set free all this curses on this land down here. You know what I mean? And we're going to have our immortal body. We get raptured out of here, man. And, and ladies, can you imagine? Uh, our, our, our world's just beginning. Did you know that? Life on this earth right now is short, isn't it? It goes by pretty quick. I can't believe how quick it went by. Something's wrong with this picture. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was going to be young forever and never have to worry about the back part of death and all of them things. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to get raptured out of here. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, it passes by pretty quick, doesn't it? I can remember. I can remember when I had dark hair. <laughs> and a lot of my brothers and sisters had it too. Amen. But that's okay. It's a sign of the times. Just like the sign of the times that we see out there right now is a sign of the times. But let's look at old Paul and see uh, you know, Paul's still out doing the work that he had to do. Look here. And God wrote m special miracles by the hands of Paul. What happened when Paul started doing signs and wonders and miracles? People started following him. A revival started breaking out because they seen him doing signs, wonders, and miracles. And you say, well, I'm not in it for signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm in it for all of it. Amen. I'll tell you right now, I want God to touch the people, his people and his His uh, uh, creation 
and uh, down here we need it when we get with him with our immortal body. We ain't going to need it. We're going to have a good one. Amen. It's going to be good for eternity. Let's look right here. A special miracles by the hands of Paul. Now, how did Paul do the uh, special miracles by his hands? Because he had authority and power that come from the anointed one, Jesus. He met Jesus on the Damascus Road, just like you and I met Jesus at these altars this morning. He's here. Amen. Look right here. It says, so that from his body were brought unto uh, the sick handkerchiefs and aprons, uh, and the diseases departed them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now, you ever think about why you ever take a anointed cloth that kind of relates back to old Paul you know they put uh, took claws and stuff and touched Paul and everything you know and they would take it to the sixth person or whatever the way I read it and they would be healed because that powerful anointing was on it sometimes we'll get anointed cloth and we'll all the saints will gather around and they'll anoint that cloth with oil and and we'll pray that God's going to move uh, on uh, the behalf of God Almighty and touch that person every word said amen you ever take an anointing cloth and put it on your loved one's bed or somebody like that, you know, a, a, a child or something like that and or somebody sick or something and see the results? These results, ain't they? Amen. They might come pouncing there and say, I can't sleep. I can't do nothing. I, something's going on. Ever what the situation is, okay? Paul did signs, wonders, and miracles through. He had so much power on him that the anointing, uh, flowed on the uh, the handkerchiefs and aprons and stuff, and it healed people. Amen. And I, I believe that. I believe you can uh, put anointing on a cloth and a piece of cloth and pray over it, the prayers, and take it to your loved one. It won't uh, you won't saved or healed or set free or delivered or something, and or, or put it in your back pocket. You might have some things going on. You want to put it in your pocket. Think about it. It's scripture, and we see it. Then came of the vagabond Jews Exodus took upon them to call over them that which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord saying we adjourn you by Jesus whom Paul preaches now I like this part right here these old jokers thought they could use the name of Jesus and guess what they didn't know Jesus they didn't know who he was they were sorcerers and witches and stuff they thought they could use Jesus and do some powerful stuff too we'll just tag on there and do some of the things Paul's doing okay Let's look what happened. I like this. I like, uh, look Look what them. There were seven sons, one of Seba and a Jew and a chief of the priests, uh, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, I like this right here, you know. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Who are you? You done messed up and tried to use authority. You don't have, big boy. But I know Jesus. He's got it. Hallelujah. And I know Paul. He's got it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I know the anointing ones that have it. Uh, praise God. But who are you? Uh-huh. They messed up, didn't they? Let's go a little bit further here and look like this. And it said, And the man in whom the evil spirits was leaped on them and overcame them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And there was a there was five or six of them guys. And that evil spirit in that uh, person jumped on them and, and tore their head up real good. They didn't have no authority to do that. See, they'd been uh, 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 following the wrong God. They'd been doing sorcery and stuff like that. And uh, uh, that's the demons of hell. They come up against uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even the demons know who Jesus are. Even the demons uh, knew who Paul was. But these dudes didn't. They didn't have no authority. They didn't have no power. They couldn't do nothing. But because of signs, wonders, and miracles, we're seeing some of this, the multitudes. Look here. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. You see what happened when this, uh, these demons showed up and things started happening all of a sudden. Uh, they seen the power of the people that were seeing this, seen the awesome power that Jesus has, and they begin to follow Paul around and say, hey, the, uh, the, he's healing the sick and setting the captives free. Amen. And so because of that, people started coming uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all see that? Signs and wonders follows. Let's look right here and see 
And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Some of them came up there and confessed, and they they had all kind of trinkets and things. They worshipped other gods and done all those things, and they brought they submitted their heart and said, we want to be a believer and follow the Lord thy God. Look what they've done. And many of them also which use uh, curious uh, arts uh, brought the books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it uh, 50,000 pieces of silver. You know, uh, I, I I was under I was in Reinhardt Bunky's uh, service one time up in Greensboro, North Carolina. I've seen this man preach to hundreds of millions, uh, just hundreds of thousands of people, and demons cast out and all kind of things happened, and they had revival out there, hundreds of thousands. He come to Greensboro up here, and uh, one time, and I was went to see him, and uh, I was upset because there's only about 800 people there. He's used to preaching to hundreds of thousands. He come to America to try to help America. I mean, you know Reinhardt Bunky. He was a man of God. He's with the Lord now. But I, I read some of his books. I really, uh, he was a powerful man, a German man, and he was a powerful man of God. And uh, so he come to to uh, Greenville, I mean Greensboro, North Carolina. I went to the service. He laid hands on me and, and prayed for me. But I want to tell you this: I was back there in the back. Uh, well, I was up front, but I, I went I went around to the back and I seen some. Folks back there, and I said, they're not from here. I want to talk to them. So I went back there, and this this man was there, and he said, uh, I said, brother, uh, were you, you from around Greensboro? He said, oh, no. He said, I'm from the Rain Hard Bunky Ministries. I said, well, praise God, I'm so glad to have you here. And he said, you know, we come to America to bring the good news to the Americans and said, uh, you know, in uh, in uh, Africa where Reinhardt is preaching all the gospel and 100,000, 300,000 people's getting healed, set free, and delivered, and he's preaching all them people, people are getting saved and everything. He said, the witches, the uh, witch doctors, uh, they brought out barrels, and the witches and the uh, witch doctors and all, they started bringing their bones and trinkets and throwing them uh, in the fire and burning them uh, and turning to God Almighty, revival was breaking out in that place because God was doing things and getting evil out. Hallelujah. Praise God. And all of those things were being burned and it's happening. You see what happened here? All of the witch brought their stuff up, their old books, and they started burning it. And it was so much, it was almost uh, 50,000 pieces of silver. And I kept talking to that man. I like to kind of interview and talk to people sometimes. You know, so I kept talking to that man, and I said, I'm so glad you're here. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, but you know, brother, said, we come to America, and I'm in my motel room, and it comes up on the TV. Call the psychic, and he'll tell you what's going on. <clears throat> that was America. America needed Reinhardt Bunky to bring revival and bring the power of God and the good news to America. And he said, yeah, the psychics on the TV is telling you, call me and I'll tell you what's going on. Evil. You see that junk around the neighborhood now, little signs up, call me and I'll read uh, demons of hell to you. We see stuff like that, don't we? Awful things. I'll tell you right now, we as Christians need to clean our house out and, and talk to people about stuff like that. And it's not right, it's not of God and... and uh, uh, but it, it amazed me how this uh, this man told me about what's going on in America. But what went on there, you see the same thing happened in Paul's time. And when this happened, signs, wonders, and things happened, guess what? Revival broke out. People started coming. Things started happening. Signs and wonders to glorify God. That's a sign of revival right there. Did you know that? I'm praying God's going to move uh, in Liberty Ministries and you're going to see signs. We're already seeing signs. Demons are cast out and people are touched and healed and delivered and people are saved. Amen. That's a sign of revival right there. When these things start happening, that's a sign of revival. I'm going to show you somebody else has big time revival that the multitudes came because of signs and wonders confirming the word. Amen? Think about it. Awesome. Awesome. Look right here. And uh, verse 20 it says, 
and so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So what happened? They had revival and the word of God prevailed and, and Paul was preaching the word and signs and wonders came forth and it says right here, so mightily grew the word of God, it prevailed. People started coming. Now, they wanted God Almighty. They wanted to hear the truth, the good news, the gospel, hallelujah. And that's what we need in this day and time like never before. Praise God. I want to tell you right now. I'll tell you, I've done some of that. I've, I've went to people's houses and told them what's going on and prayed with them and whatever and go out in their backyard and take a barrel and burn stuff, pornography and stuff that they shouldn't have in their house. I've burned things before that wouldn't burn, but I kept burning them and it finally burned. Amen. People, we got to get rid of the stuff. Brother Steve preached a good message Wednesday night about things. Take an inventory of your house. You got something in your house. It ain't right. Ask God to show you what it is. I remember one time I'm going to tell you, just tell you like it is. I come in my house. I was on fire with the power of God in an awesome way, and God was moving in my life. Still is, praise God. And I come in my house, and I've got, you know, I'm raising my, my family and everything, and uh, one of my boys got uh, hooked up in a wrong manner, and there was something evil in the house. And when I walked in that house, uh, it was witchcraft junk. And uh, when I walked in my own house, the Holy Ghost told me there's something in that back bedroom you need to get out of the house. Okay? The Holy Ghost told me that. So I went into the back bedroom, in his, in his bedroom, and there's a hiding place in, in the bed. I didn't even know it was there. The Holy Ghost led me straight to it, and I pulled it out, and it was a little potion demon book. I went outside and throwed it in the fire and burn it. You got something in your house, you need to look around. It may, may be like Steve preached a good message Wednesday night. It don't need to be there. You better get it out. Amen. We as Christians get those things out and, 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 and think on good things and everything, and God's moving. Uh, and you know, we see signs and wonders and things happen. The Spirit of God is moving. We need to go forward. I want to see people healed, set free, and delivered, don't you? I want to see wheelchairs stacked up over there and people run into the, the, the aisles. And who do I want to see that for? God Almighty. I want to see our King glorified. It glorifies Him. He is the healer we ain't, but He uses us. And I want to be used by Him until it's time for me to rapture out of here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God radically changed lives. we here today, ain't we? He changed our life, didn't He? Amen. Look right here. And uh, in verse 13, it talked about signs, and it talked about this deputy here. It says right here, And when they had gone through the isle unto Papamus, they found a certain sorcerer and a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which, which was with the deputy of the country. Sergius Paulus, a prudent man called by Bar Barnabas and Paul, Saul, desired to hear the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation. Now, there was a sorcerer there, okay? It was a demon resisting things. You know, I I'm going to tell you, uh, you'll be surprised at uh, some some. Uh, people that get around you sometimes are in things that you can't imagine sometimes. They in that demon stuff and everything, you know, and you'll sense it in your spirit. Cast it out. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. I don't want no demon of hell or anything like that stealing anything that God has done. Amen? Think about that. Let's look right here. He withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. In other words, the deputy was kind of drawing towards God, and he was, this sorcerer was wanting him to turn away from that. He didn't want him to, to get to faith and everything. Then Paul, who also is called, I mean, uh, then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. He had some problems in because the power of God was in Paul's eyes. Amen. Can you imagine? Look right here. And the word says, and said, O oh, full of stability and all mischief, though child of the devil, thou enemy of the righteous, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He was coming against God Almighty, wouldn't he? Y'all see that? But man, he was coming against who? 
the anointed one. Y'all see that? Look at here. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt uh, be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist of the darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Y'all see that? He come against God. Now what happened? When Paul said, you're going to be blind because you're coming against God Almighty. All the multitudes was in there listening to Paul in the gospel of Jesus Christ, seen that sign, wonders, and miracles going on right there, and it drawed the people even closer to the good gospel of the good news. Amen. There was a multitude started coming in because th the power of God was prevailed against the enemy there. Y'all see that? I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you, right, revival of sign one of the signs is healings, demons cast out. And if some of those things aren't being done, it's mainly human, isn't it? Think about it. Let's go right here and look. Verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished uh, at the doctrine of the Lord. Y'all see that? that? I say the deputy got saved. And when he got saved, other people started coming, I'm sure, you know, because uh, uh, the people started seeing that. Now, let's go on down a little bit in this true revival. Look right here, Luke 4, 40 through 44, the Word of God says, Now then the sun was setting, and all they that had sick, diverse diseases brought them unto him. He laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Who is this? This is Jesus. All the people, think about it. They couldn't go to 360 and to the hospitals and stuff like that, but they had Jesus, amen. And they brought their sick people and sick went to him because signs and wonders, Jesus was healing people and setting them free and delivering them. You see that? He laid his hands on every one of them and he healed them. Look what that caused. And devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them and suffered them not to speak, but they knew that he was Christ. Even the demon, demons knew who Christ was. You see that? That's the second time we've seen that come up here. I tell you, our Lord is real, and the demons of hell quiver when they know that he's there. Amen. I'll tell you right now, look at there. Thou art Christ, the Son of God. He rebuked them and suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. So Christ was doing what? He's laying hands on every one of them, and he healed them. Can you imagine going to a revival like that, and people come in sick and lame and demons in them, and every one of them went out healed and set free? Amen? God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still doing it. And he said, greater works would we do. Amen? Think about it. God bless y'all. Look here. And the Bible says, and when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place. And the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him. And he should not depart from them. Now, all them signs and wonders and stuff is going on. They said, hey, let's, they started following him, didn't they? The multitude started coming at him. Revival started breaking out everywhere he was at. Hey, you hear Jesus is over there and he's healing people. Let's go, let's go, let's go see that fire, amen? Think about it. Multitude, signs and wonders. Look right here. And he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. Look at this here. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Now, I'll tell you, when he started preaching him, the word got out, Jesus is coming. Jesus, people started multiple, uh, coming and following and multitudes of them started coming and hearing the gospel and multitudes started believing and getting saved, healed, set free and delivered. Amen. Well, today, the same Jesus is here today. Amen. So we got to do our part. We got to ask people to uh, pray for him and do the thing. Uh, the, the group uh, uh, did some awesome stuff last night. You know, God's still setting people free, healing them, and delivering them. Did you know that? It's still going on today. I'm telling you. And you notice Jesus, when he went, everywhere he went, there's always some demons or something showing up, wouldn't it? And what did he do? He didn't let it bother him. He just went on. I can remember we go to the Dominican Republic a lot of times. 
first thing's going to happen in one of your services, some of the demons going to show up, try to test you. But that don't matter. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. You just lay hands on them, cast them out, and move on with the service. Amen? Think about it. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He preached in the synagogues of Galilee. Look at here. And Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. You think the multitudes didn't follow our Lord? Look right here and see what it says. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching uh, in their synagogues and, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all matter of sickness and all matter of diseases among the people. And when that starts happening, what happens? Look right what happens. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all the sick that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which had were lunatics, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Well, my goodness, can you believe that? I'm going to tell you right now, I had demons in me. I had demons in me. I had to go through deliverance. I went through deliverance, and God set me free. Amen. He set these people free too, didn't he? Amen. He healed me, set me free. That's the one. His name is Jesus. Well, he's still doing it today. Look right here. And those which had were lunatics, and those that had the palsy, he healed them. It said right there, his fame went throughout all Syria. I tell you right now, if you got the fire going on somewhere in church and the people are being healed, set free, and delivered, people and multitudes are going to start coming because most everybody out there has got some kind of need. And we serve the one who can fix everything. Ain't nothing he can't fix. Think about it. Look right here in this uh, 25. And there followed him great what? Was revival going on when he done that? I think it was, don't you? I think revival was going on big time when he was healing people and setting them free. Signs and wonder was confirming his holy word of who he is. It said, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond Jordan. Multitudes followed and flocked to our Lord. Why? Because God was healing everybody. Signs and wonders were following, and people became believers, and they followed the Lord thy God and the, and the good news. Amen? Let's look right here and see. Uh, we see. We see what's going on there. The Second Chronicles 39. I want to read what it says. Oh, yeah. This is in the Old Testament. Talk about just a little revival right here. His name is Hezekiah. He started doing some good things. He opened the temple back up. And when he opened the temple back up that his father had closed and wouldn't share and, and, and following God Almighty, he opened it back up and he destroyed the groves and done all this thing. It brought revival in Jerusalem. Amen. Look right here. And in the first year of his reign, in the fifth month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. I'm not going to go down into that right now. I could. It, we're talking about Hezekiah here. Hezekiah, you know, he got 15 more years. He prayed out, prayed to God because God come and told him, sent a prophet and said, you're going to die, get your house in order. And Hezekiah turned to the Lord and said, Lord, turned to the wall and said, Lord, hadn't I done this and this? And, and God gave him 15 more years. But I want to tell you right now, Hezekiah was a good king. If you look and study in the Bible, you'll see 33 bad kings in the Old Testament, and you'll see nine good kings. I want to tell you right now, Hezekiah was a good king. He knew his father was bad, and he opened the temple back up, and he brought the priests and the Levites in there, and they started worshiping and praising God and doing what they're supposed to do, and uh, uh, Israel uh, started being, Judea started being blessed again. Think about it. And revival happened when he opened up the temple. People started coming back in. Amen. That's what we got to do. We got to cry out to the Lord. I'll tell you right now. Uh, what did Hezekiah do? He opened the doors which had been shut by his father. 
he brought in the priest and the Levites, and he sanctified and cleansed uh, that. He charged the priest and the Levites to worship Jehovah in the temple. In 2911, we see that, praise God. He interceded for people's healing. Are you praying for your brothers and sisters' healing? Lift them up. You see them, they're not here today. Lift them up to God that God will touch them and heal them. There's Jay. He's been prayed for, and you see the power of God. He's here today, amen. We give God the praise. Amen. God's the healer, but we need to lift uh, our brothers and sisters up to the Lord. Amen. i tell you what, Hezekiah done it. Hezekiah destroyed all idolatry in 31.1. We can see that. He got uh, all of that stuff uh, destroyed. They had the groves and stuff out there and the little altars. He got them destroyed and started praising God Almighty. Revival broke out uh, in, uh, in Judea and Israel again. Amen. Think about it. And what did he do? What did Hezekiah do? He humbled himself. What are you doing today? Are you humbling yourself to the Lord thy God? Are you asking God to move with signs and wonders to glorify the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Is he doing that in your life? Is he doing that in areas? You see those areas coming forth. You are seeing revival take place. Amen. God wants to revive us. We got to get ourselves ready, and it is. I'm seeing signs and wonders happening right here in our church. God is delivering people. God is saving people. God is moving on people's behalf. God is showing favor to people to get through certain situations in the journey that they're in. Amen. God is moving in Liberty Ministries. I'll tell you right now, and I give him the praise for it. I give him the glory for it. How many want revival to strike out? Amen. We want revival. We want God to take charge of us. Amen. He's the one who brings revival. He's the one that does the signs and wonders and miracles. It's him that does it through us sometimes. Amen. We just continue to follow the Lord and doing what he's asked us to do. Keep going forward. Keep standing. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll tell you right now, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees jumped, tried to jump on Jesus and said, why are you healing on the seventh day? What if you was in a wheelchair, you was crippled and couldn't walk and had to let you down through the roof or something like that? I don't care what day it was. I'd want to be healed, wouldn't you? God is our healer. He's the one we look to, praise God. I want to see signs and wonders to glorify God and touch the people in all the knees. Amen. And it will glorify God. When somebody gets healed, set free or delivered, it glorifies God. Amen? It glorifies God. And we keep ourselves humble because we know who does it, don't we? Hallelujah. Every head bowed, please. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we all clean up our act, God. If we've got anything that's not pleasing to you, reveal it to us and let us get it out of our life. And we want to come in unity with you in your house and assemble ourselves to glorify and magnify you, God. And God, we want to see our brothers and sisters saved. We want to see our children saved, God. Because I know, God, that you're fixing to rapture us out of here. We want to see our loved ones saved. We want to see other people saved that's running around out there in a lost and dying world. God, we pray in the holy name of Jesus, God, that by revival breaks loose in churches all over the world, that people will be healed, set free, and delivered all over the world, oh God. Let it happen, God, before you rapture us out of here, God, because we know you're fixing to come back, God. But, Lord, those that's on the edge that need to be saved, let them be saved, God. Let them be saved, God. Don't let them be deceived by the devil, Lord. Let them come to you, our families, our loved ones, our children, God, in the holy name, in the holy name of Jesus. Folks on the Internet, Grab a hold of this Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. Talk to him. All you got to do is talk to him. 
and humble yourself and submit to him. He'll do the rest. <laughs> He'll do the rest because he loves you. Father, I pray you go with each and every one this day in a special way. And I pray, God, that revival, it is breaking out, and it's going to glorify you, God. And saves will be saved. We, we claim souls all over the world in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless every one of you. Thank you for being here. Bring somebody back with you. Remember, uh, you, you all got homework to do. Invite somebody to church. Amen. And you're here.